category. I mean, technology, right? It happens. Yeah. It happens. Well, Kareen, how are you today? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing, I mean, I'm doing fantastic. What better way to spend a uh, Thursday evening with someone as badass and talented as you? You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, welcome to the show. It is so cool. Uh, as I was saying before, amazing to have you here. So, yeah. So, uh, let's get started with the whole, uh, with the whole uh, interview now. Tell me how your acting career started. Um, well, I always kind of wanted to be some type of performer ever since I was really little. Um, yeah. I would say, like, I kind of went through the phases of ballerina and then the pop star era and then musical theater and kind of like yeah. went on to it, just acting. So I love it. I love it. It is, it, you know, one thing that I find curious is that when you're little, I mean, you tend to explore so many things here and there. But you don't actually see it as a job, you know what I mean? You see it as, as fun, you know? You want to have fun, you want to have a good time. So you see it more like a fun thing. And then later on, when you realize that you need to work, pay bills, and you can, and then and then you know that you can have that fun that you have for a living, you know, that is cool. Yeah, totally. And, like, the older you get, the more avenues you realize that you can create money with some performing or acting, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, you definitely start to realize how many different avenues there really are absolutely sure. absolutely yeah i couldn't agree more i love it and what were some of the challenges that you had when you were you know recently started with your acting career career i mean we i think we all have them, right whenever we start something new at first it's just a huge train wreck right so for you what were some of those challenges um i think for me personally i mean i'm still going through challenges i think everybody and i think that's how you grow right oh, yeah. because oh, yeah because you face these challenges and you try to overcome them and become better. But I would say one that I've kind of thought about recently is I used to get really nervous and I used to really care um, about how people were perceiving the audition room and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but now the nervousness and me caring people think has really died to a bare minimum. <laughs> you know, it's just me coming into the room, doing what I love doing, then uh and then just accepting it for how it is the the there's so many reasons why an actor might not get chosen for something that mm. uh, it's not you it's not there's no point into getting so worked up and you know blaming yourself mm. for not something so yeah. yeah yeah makes sense makes sense i love it now talking about a little bit of, about your performances let's let's start with the ones from theater so mm. you've been in third made of the west our town Monty, Nightmare Slash or High, Troubles That Been. I mean, the list goes on. And I mean, also the beauty, uh, the beauty of the Beast. And as I was saying, the list goes on and on. I mean, it's huge. I love it. But but tell me, like, what like what are some of the things that you enjoy the most about theater? And also, how you usually prepare before a performance? Do you have a, I don't know, like, a, let's say, so-called ritual, that, like, you know, like a certain thing that you always do in order to kind of set you up? Yeah, well... I mean, it, it's, it kind of stinks because I haven't really been in, in theater as much since COVID. Yeah, um, sure. Obviously, I used to do theater a lot at the time. Um, I would say, like, my ritual before that would be getting into the space, um, doing some type of physical warm up, so stretching, moving okay. around. Okay. Um, and then waking up the different parts of the voice and, you know, tongue twisters, stuff like that. And then um for an example like our town um i had to play a mother of two children and mm -hmm. as i was younger for that role um it, it, i had to put myself in a certain mental state to be able to to get myself in a place of uh of a, of a loving and sacrificial mother yeah yeah so um i for like that one i, I sung a lullaby before every single to try to put me into the headspace of yeah. you know having children because I don't have any. So yeah, <laughs> gotta put yourself in different places. Totally, totally. To relate to it. Yeah, that is so cool, and it is so interesting because from from you know like for some of the actors that I've interviewed, like so many have like their own things, and they, uh, uh, to me it is super fun and interesting to know like like uh, like to know like how you uh, prepare because I think it it show us the audience of how human you really are you know what i mean like, because i think that for some people might might think that actors you might i mean you kind of machines you know that you just need to need to need to learn your lines and uh, you're not going to be nervous because you're an actor so 
So you're you're supposed to be like super professional. But I mean that kind of thing. I love it because it shows like you like you are totally human. You know, like you actually feel nervous, even though that you have done it for a while now. You still have like that feeling. So totally, all the time. <laughs> I love it. And to me, like how you usually prepare a character. Now I understand, of course, that depends on the role, uh, basically. But how you usually, let's say, that you start this journey of character creation? Yeah. Um, so starting off with like the basic questions: who, what, when, where, why is oh. always start. You know, you want to dissect the script, like where is it taking place, what time period is it taking place, all oh, yeah. that. Um, and something to me that I think is really beneficial to being able to deliver lines and mm -hmm. people and then coming off genuinely is say I'm talking about um, the time somebody flipped me off at a grocery store you know I want to maybe take a journal or out oh, what was that time that that person flipped me off in the grocery store yeah. What, yeah, yeah. What? so then when I say those lines then I have an actual memory attached to it um, when I'm delivering those lines. So it comes off as, as a genuine interaction. Yeah. With... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And what are some of the things that, that, that you enjoy the most when you were in this process of creating a character? Um, I find the most intriguing um, finding the reasons why a character does what they do okay um and i i think the best way i can explain this is like say if you're playing the the villain character you know you have to justify why they're doing the things that they're doing mm. so you know maybe like the like cinderella's stepmother right you know yeah. we very evil person for doing what she's doing but you know maybe in that time like it, it that time that that story is played she has to keep a certain reputation she mm -hmm. cannot afford help around the house and she is not going to diminish her daughter's reputation for somebody who is not her own blood Dope. so you know not that not that the way that she is thinking is correct or moral or right but you have to justify why would cinderella's stepmother act the way that she does mm. And you have to put her in her in that you have to go in that place and justify no i am right i am doing the right decision um and even with any character because there's going to be a conflict in any show yeah. uh, you have to justify what decisions that character is making even if you yourself would not make those justifications right okay. mm -hmm. mm, i love it and now talking about your performances on camera you were in Here Comes Johnny, Love Melody, Wars of the World, Like What You Like. Again, the list goes on and on. It's so badass. I love it. But tell me, like, what do you think that is important for storytelling? Like, what aspect would you say that it's super important on the, on the process of storytelling? Probably collaboration. If we're talking about film, um every single role is so important to create yeah. film production you know it's not just the actor it's it's the director it's mm -hmm. the geographer it's the sound person it's the lighting person if one person isn't doing their job at a percent then you're gonna have a subpar production um and like you can have the greatest actor with the worst and think like wow this, this isn't a very good uh, good footage, you know, or a good film or whatever. But if you were there on set, everybody would be like, oh my gosh, like they're an amazing actor, you know? Yeah. So I think when it comes to film in particular, it's the collaboration, having a really strong team and everybody being on the same page to create a work of art. Totally, totally. Yeah, I couldn't agree. And sometimes, and sometimes we can't, I mean, we can even see it, you know, that for example, we will have like, this huge film with great actors, but somehow didn't connect. You know, somehow you think like mm, I didn't like it, but you you know like like for, like there are like so many things here that probably uh, the script might be amazing, but if the soundtrack was awful, you know it's it's yeah. already flopped. So yeah, I do I do I do agree that there are so many aspects 
that you need to actually take a look on so then everybody can so then everything can work properly yeah and everybody like their artistic and creative opinion is is so important and that's why every single job on set is so important um and in theater too that's why everybody's job in theater is also so important they should be treated with the highest and utmost respect without so, every together the production doesn't happen so yeah 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 i agree now talking about yeah talking about going on set what is the what is the number one thing that you always carry with you or that you always bring with you when you go you know when you have to go up to shoot a film on set or or uh, yeah like something like that i try to always bring water and snacks just in case because you never know yeah because sometimes you're gonna be there for a really long time yeah um, I usually bring water and snacks, um, script, usually um, something to write with. Mm. Um, let's see, probably my phone, because uh, you usually need a silent activity to, to do all your quick aside. Oh yeah. But yeah, I, I, I would say there's probably some things that I want to put in my kit that I don't do yet, but... Um, Some other things that I would probably want to start putting in my kit would be um, face oil paper, okay. so you're on camera. The, the, that's something that I've seen other other actors bring, and I'm like, oh, that's that's a good idea. Um, the uh, probably a, another book to read. Um, yeah, while that's I'm, cool. Uh, but yeah, I would say food, water the script journal to write it and um any cosmetic things that i would need okay okay what about a jacket oh yeah jacket's a good one totally right i mean you never know another thing that i would probably bring is um i have what are they called rack balls and those, okay. those tennis balls are really great to like massage the body so like if you like oh. lay down And you can lay on top of of one and it helps just like loosen you up and not be so stiff um so i would say tennis balls are to to, to help yeah. relax i didn't know that that's genius i'm gonna start bringing some <laughs> yeah please do. i mean it'll sell, like priceless priceless if my college education was worth one thing it's bring tennis balls <laughs> there you go there you go i love it now if you could describe a movie, right? In which all of the characters you have played at the moment will gather for a party. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what would be the name of that film? Oh, man. I got super villains in there. I got Fiona from Shrek. I got <laughs> Edith Wharton. <laughs> mm. um, I would probably say a a clashing of times <laughs> i like it yeah yeah that sounds cool all right all right and what about describing your career at the moment mm. but on a movie tv show book play even a musical why not tell me what would be the title of your career the hustle <laughs> okay yeah 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 it's That's simple awesome. catchy yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, I, but I, maybe that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, for being an actor, I mean, you have to stay in a hotel 24-7, right? I, I remember uh, one of the actors that I interviewed once told me that actors don't do films for a living, they do auditions. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. If you like it, this is not the job for you. Yeah, 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 that is true. That is true. Now, What about describing your career? But now, on a drink or a meal, which one would you choose? I'm gonna say a whiskey. Okay. Yeah. yeah I like there's it. Listen, it. There's definitely some sour moments. <laughs> it's not like it's sometimes it's a really really good drink and sometimes. Uh, it can be a little difficult to swallow. Uh, so I would say, I would say probably a whiskey sour. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Plus, I mean, yeah, it's cool. It's, you never know. I mean, if you drink too much, 
that's not gonna be fun or maybe yes who knows yeah i have a good time <laughs> I, like it. i like it i like it now tell me like what motivates you you know we all have those days in which we're like you know what i'm gonna quit you know um mm -hmm. it's i mean getting inside into all of these toxic thoughts or this toxic bubble that i call is way too easy right but yeah what what pulls you out you know what what gets you back on your feet so you can continue on your road um right now i'm gonna speak for right now um surrounding myself with other really strong amazing women yeah um, i have really started to build my team of really strong women um that i like going to and i want to help build them up and they help build me up I, love um, i would say that they're probably some of the best supporters right now. yeah um, one of them you interviewed janice i believe last week um i'm helping her with her production of blood lust for fan productions mm -hmm. um, so she's like another one of those amazing women um my friend Christina's watching right now she's she's an amazing model uh, killing the game and uh yeah i would just say like some of my other artistic friends are a great motivator and you know even when things are feeling down mm. i still go still get an audition from my agent and that'll build me back up or i see an audition for a show that i really want to do and that builds me back up and my mind is always coming up with creative thoughts and it's just trying to constantly feed that creativeness is what keeps me going okay okay i love it i love it here and my last question what can we expect from you in the future from me in the future hmm. well i own my company i am self-employed so um i'm hoping with my company to help other arts art become self-employed as well mm -hmm businesses because um I think it helps to be able to you know have that financial stability but also have the freedom to be able to do the audio travel. Totally. Totally. So um it, I am looking to increase my business which is Bear V A R E um and working on Bloodless with uh Janice that I had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And um I would say down the road some some really big things I think are are in store. I read an, an amazing article. I think it's Anne Dow is her name. She plays Aunt Lydia in Handmaid's Tale. Okay. And I just read this article and I needed it in this moment. She had written an article that she in New York and she saw across the street where she was a server at mm -hmm. on Broadway her classmates name in lights yeah. for a Broadway show and i get went home crying that night saying like when's it going to be my turn right when's it going to be my turn and um she said that like there was there was a whisper kind of like in her head she was just like you are going to find success in your 50s and now she's an amazingly well-known actress with this amazing role on hand tail and she yeah. said she's in her 50s so and i've always felt kind of the same thing i always felt like it's going somewhere in the 30s or later so th that was a great article i recommend to look it up and read it i love it i love it i mean and you know what i'm too sure that it's gonna happen you know the fact the fact doing that you're doing it because you love it you know as simple as that as, as it my may sound mm -hmm. i mean we all know people that 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 for some of them it, it takes decades or so or sometimes on a, a whole life to finally realize what they want to do and and like uh and what are some of the things that they that actually will make them happy you know and the fact that you're doing it you're making it happen it that is so cool and that, that is inspiring i'm super I'm super sure that eventually we're gonna no i mean we're, we're, we're gonna hear from you see you like everything from basically everywhere you know like from continent to continent because you're so badass uh, i mean you're so talented i mean your resume speaks for it for itself i mean it's huge it's awesome and uh yeah I, yeah i just can't wait for it thank you so much absolutely and also i want to thank those who are watching this right now thank you so much for watching uh, yes yeah right now or watching later on instagram or if you're watching it on youtube 
or listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you know, on your way to work or while walking, you know. Uh, and, uh, and again, Karine, thank you so much. Also, those watching, normally what I would say is read up the boss and then go follow this amazing, talented actor that I'm, that I'm uh, chatting right now, like right now. And then let's make her viral. Let's make sure everybody knows about her. And then let's, and then let's hashtag, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's do hashtag Team Karine because you're so badass, so talented here. And before I send you off, I need to send you a proper random send up. If you have seen some of my episodes before, you know exactly what is about to happen. If not, then I can surprise you. So that's even better. So let me just show you. I promise that one day we're going to have live audience. You can count on that. But in the meantime, you know how it goes. So. Okay. But yes. again, thank you so much. Keep killing it, Corinne. Have an epic upcoming weekend. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>